Hi guys, Patty from Patty's Crafty Spa, and we are wrapping up this album. This is the third part, and I love how this came out. You can see kind of in the light a little bit how much room is in here and how nice and chunky it came out. I could not wait to get this together. Let me first just go over you with you what I used in this video. So from Journals and Planners, I used the medium and the small pocket dies. And I also use the new accordion pocket die, which is super fun, gives you a lot of room to really add some nice photo maps and stuff, lots of room for expanding. And from Big Labels and Tags, I also use number 13. And we use this, obviously, using many different options with it in the video, um, in the tutorial for the pages. So let me just walk you through what I have here. So on the front, I just added a chipboard embellishment to my book. This is one that was in the collection, and I just wanted to use it up. I do have opening on the sides to go ahead and slide pictures in on there. So let's go ahead and get started. I do have to fix some things. My stuff, it seems to be catching, but no biggie. We'll fix that. So anyway, over here. So Real quick, to fix this, probably what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut out a piece of clear acetate and go ahead and border the sides with some pattern paper, and then it'll just set here on top. That way I can keep my pages protected from these pages here catching. So I'll probably do that. So if you want to go ahead and do that, you just cut it the same size as your page, add a nice little quarter inch, half inch border of pattern paper, and then just set it in here, and that way it'll keep the all the mats and stuff from catching on each other. So it's probably what I'll do. So in this video here, this is what we're going to do. So we assemble the book. I'll show you how to do the cover, the binding, and then the inside front and back cover pages. So for the inside front and back cover, we have, this is the medium pocket die here. And then lifting up the tag, we have the expandable pocket that I used. So let's see. So you can see how much room. There's a lot. I mean, I can really get my hand in there with no problems. I have that. And then lots of room for my photo mats. This one happens to be a 4 by 6 which literally is 4 and a half by 6 and a half for the photo mats. So that fits in this expandable pocket just nice. And those there. And then I have, using the small pocket die, room for two little photo mats here and tags and stuff if you wanted to add those. This comes down and keeps everything all closed. So the more you put in this top pocket, the tighter this will be, keeping everything down nice and tight. And then we come over here to this page. So we have our photo mats, just like this. And then this was in our first video where I showed you to make this page. And then room for our photo mats right here, both of those pockets. And to keep these closed as well, went ahead and made some photo mats, again, just to keep it all tucked down. So you don't have to worry about magnets or certain closures. If you wanted to, you could definitely add some magnets to those to keep those closed, or even a little string tie if that's something you also like doing. The string ties are also kind of cute. I really like those because it gives it a nice added embellishment. So then behind my pockets made with the tags, I actually have pockets for tags, so they just slide in here behind the pockets, and then behind those, there is room for another photo mat, and then we're not done, then we have this whole photo mat right here that slides out the back side, so you can go ahead and add photos. And those all tuck in there, and then this whole thing opens up where you have room to go ahead and add more photos, lots of space for some photo um, collages and stuff like that. And then we flip over to this side. So we come over here, and I did have to turn my tag sideways because my brad right here was catching over here, so I didn't want it to ruin my paper, so I just put the tag sideways. But again, if you want, you can just go ahead and make a little single page for an acetate sheet to protect everything so you don't have to worry about anything catching. And a double stack pocket right here. So you can put, so it would kind of go like that. 
So I went ahead, and that's why I put this one sideways. And then over here, you just have your little tag opening. Just flip it, swing tab, I should say. Just open it, and then it reveals a pretty little waterfall right there. Put some photos. And then to keep the waterfall closed, we have this pocket. So my tag just goes, swings back and forth, just like that. And then for here as well, this side opens up, and you have room, again, for a nice photo collage. You get a nice big pocket to go ahead and add some loose photo mats and stuff to it. Just like that. And then we just go ahead and repeat ourselves with our pockets that all open up. And then we come over here to this page. And then we just flip again. Just like that. Again, I turned it sideways because of my little rad. I still have some more tides and stuff to go ahead and finish. And then open up there. And then the back page. And then again, the back inside, inside back cover just mimics the front cover with the little side pockets and then the double pockets here. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this album. It was a lot of fun to make. Let me open up right here. And anyway, if you have any questions, leave them down below. And until next time, happy crafting and enjoy the video. Bye, guys. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started on our album cover. And I'm super excited to get this started. So what you're going to need is three pieces of chipboard. Two of them, 9 by 9 and 1 by 9 by 3 And that will be your spine. And then I also already pre-cut out two of my papers, 11 by 11 because that's what I need to wrap this cover with. So let's get started. So let's get started with the first one. So I already cut my cardstock out at 11 by 11, and this is 9 by 9, and that's what I'm going to use. Um, so I have a 1 inch border, and I'm going to use my scoreboard. And I'm going to go ahead and line this up. So I have already gone ahead and added my score tape. And then I'm going to use these new tools that I got from Country Craft Creations. And these are 1 inch, and this way, go like this and like this everything is already lined up so you just make sure your paper is up tight against it and then the tools as well and then what you're going to do is just basically set this in so you have the one inch border so let's give this a try i have a feeling that this is going to make life so much easier and i'm also going to try the way tamara wraps her album covers because it looked like it would be so much easier as well. So I haven't made a bigger album, and I thought this would be perfect to try. Put on the tape off. All right, let's make sure nothing moved. We're all good. And then basically, I'm just going to snug it right up against everything. <laughs> Perfect. Look at that. Nice one-inch border. Make sure that's down good. And I'm just pressing it up against the chipboard so it will fold nice. So now I can go ahead and add my tape. And I'm excited to see how this one is going to come out. Yeah. 
and let me cut my corners. And I think I have a new tool somewhere. Hold on one second. All right, so I did get a new tool. I knew I had it somewhere, I had to find it. So this is a new tool from Colorway Arts. And I use a lot of purse spacers too for cutting. So this one's nice. This is a new one. This is a heavy metal. And now it'll cut straight across. So I originally had this tool from her. And it was too short on the side. So as you can see, if I were to put it on my paper, it was just a little short. So I just added a ruler to make it longer. But let's try this one on. So I need a cutting mat. And let's cut off my corners. Now, if you don't have a tool, you can just take scissors and you could just cut it just like that. But I'm going to go ahead and use the tool. I have it. All right, and let's go ahead. This one wrapped up. So I'm just going to fold on the corners just to get them folded. Just like that. And because I don't have tape that goes all the way over, I'm also running low. I have an order coming, but hasn't made it yet. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue right to the edge. and get it good burnished. And stick that one down. And come to this side, do the same. And then now I'm just going to fold in these corners here, smoosh them down. And to this side. See how nice and even that is there. So let's get this side. Glue first. There's our first cover all nice and perfectly wrapped. All right, so I'm going to do the next one same way. Line it up. 
So these are definitely nice. I used to draw lines, but I don't think I'll be drawing lines anymore. So again, we're going to set it right down. And if you can make an album without um, any mistakes because of the tools, that's a win-win for me. Anything to make things easier. All right. Sure, we're all nice and tight everywhere. And looks pretty straight to me again. Nice. All right. Get it all down. And the tape again. Cut off our corners. I love that she made a new one that's longer. Because even though my ruler worked worked good, depending on how I did my knife, I would get it like kind of angled so sometimes it wasn't perfectly straight. She did enough so I could definitely use it, but this one is nice. How easy was that? And go this way. Sides, squish those side corner pieces down again. And some glue. Nice. Last one. And that's it for the cover pieces. You just gotta do the spine now. Look at that again. Perfect. Nice and clean. All right, so now we're going to work on the spine. So we're going to get started on the spine piece. So this one is 9 by 3. I cut my paper at 11 by, forgot, 11 by 7, because I want 2 inches on the side. So what I'm going to do first is, let's go ahead. 
and I'm just going to score so I have a two inch spot. Where's my I'm just going to score down. An easy line, nothing crazy. Let me get a pencil. So, because these were a perfect one inch, I'm just going to go ahead and make a mark, trace out one inch. Put it on my scoreboard too, but I have the tools, so why not? So, I have one inch, and then this is literally going to go right in the center just like that. All right, so let's stick this one down. And just like that. So now I can go ahead and I want to fold this way and fold this way. This. So let's go ahead and um, do it this way. So I want to get a nice good fold on it like this. And that's just to get the paper trained to fold where I want it. And then I'm just pressing in on the paper to try to get it wrapped a little bit. Let's do this side too. Because basically what you're going to end up doing, you can see that really good on the camera, is this is going to go on here. So you want them um, pressed pretty good. So. Go ahead and work that a little bit. All right, and now let's go ahead and fold this. Just like that. And then we do the same thing to the bottom. So fold it up on the chipboard first because you know it's squared right here. And then just press down. And it should stay straight for the most part. It's gonna, not going to matter too much because we are going to go ahead and cut that off. Just make sure our paper is molded. So when that is done, what we're going to do now is we need to go ahead and we're going to cut from here to here because we don't want anything extra. Oops. See my line enough that way. That. All right, so now we're going to apply it so we can put this side down here. So I'm going to add my tape. Use this so I don't tear my paper. And I'm going to use glue as well. So all right, so basically we're going to fold this down.
stick that down. Make sure it's creased up against the side. And then the same thing for the bottom or the top. And let's just go ahead and get it. Keep working that paper. And then what we're going to do now from the chipboard, right here, you want to cut a little angle just as if you're mitering it. So like that. So I have this now. And get that smushed down. So basically what you're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and add these right to the top just like that for our album cover. So let me go ahead and get some tape on here so we can stick that down. So I went ahead and added my tape. I didn't go all the way to the edge here because I did it on my book cover because I just didn't want to worry about getting it too far. So when you set it down, the cover itself is going to take up that space. All right. And then you just put your covers on like so. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So now on this here, you don't need a gusset, I guess. I'm going to try it without the gusset and see because your book Will actually close like this and you're not going to need to go any further to open your book because you don't open a book like that generally. So I'm going to try it out. All right, so let's go for it. So just make sure when you're setting it down you're lining it up to the bottom. And then it should be lined up just like that. I'll have to clean that tape up right there and there after. Let's do it there. So let's do the other side. Look how easy that was. And all nice, clean edges. Love it. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up. I'm not going to score it into the cardstock, but close. All right, so let me go ahead and clean those up, and I will be back. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started on our binding system. So I've already pre-scored, but let me tell you what you need to do. 
So you, for your binding page, you need to have one piece cut eight and a quarter by 11 and a half. And on the 11 and a half inch side, you're going to score it two inches, three inches, four inches, four and three quarters, five and three quarters, six and three quarters, seven and a half, eight and a half, and nine and a half. And that's, this is what you're going to end up with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add my score tape, and I'm going to fold it like this. So let me add my tape. So my tape is on. So I, you notice I only have three spots because you only need to add it one side because you're going to attach it like this. And then this is only a three-page album. So once it's together, it's going to look like this. So let's go ahead and stick those down. And just fold it over. And then the next one. And it doesn't matter which way you go. So now, as you see, I have big, and I can see it. I have my three binding pieces here. So the next thing that I want to do is I like to take and bend my ruler. And what I want to do is, so these binding pieces here are one inch these pieces here and I want to find the middle so obviously that would be a half inch so I'm just going to go ahead and hold it down because it's easier and I'm going to find where my half inch is and I'm just going to make a little mark so I mean if you're going to see it you can barely see it so it's like right there I know it's super dark so it would be right here. So what I'm going to do is go around to each side. So I'm going to put my half inch mark here, here, and then on both sides of the binding just because it's easier. So basically what we're going to be doing then, once we get that down, my pages when this binding is in the book are only going to come down to the half inch mark. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and mark all those. And then I'm also going to go ahead and add my score tape to just the, run it across the top. So I'll show you that in one second. So let me just show you now. I went ahead and made my half inch marks and then I went ahead and added score tape to both sides. So it's much easier to add the tape now. And now the next, I mean, add the tape now before you put the tape on the back because you get, you can just kind of bend it around like this. When you put the tape on the back, it becomes a little stiffer. So now what I'm going to do is cover tape on this whole back piece here. So that's the back with all fully covered in tape. So now we're going to go ahead and add it to our album. And to do that, let's get me some more space. So this is going to go right in the middle. So what I like to do is take my centering ruler and because this is three inches obviously one and a half inches is going to be the center so then my center point I'll make a little mark there and then on this one and then So you don't have to, so because this is only a three page album, so your center spine here is going to go into your center parts here and here. And because this is nine inches, so it's three quarters different, so... So we're going to go three-eighths up. That way I am, I'll be lined up 
right in the center there. So I go three eighths. One more here, and then over here. Right there. So what I'm going to do is center the middle page to my, my center spots here and down here. And then the bottom of my album, I'm going to line up to those marks. So and I think I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and just make a little mark right there and right there. So it'll just help me easier when I go to set it down. All right, so let's stick this down. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see how this album is going to come out. I haven't been able to play with it in a few days, so I am really ready to see. So if you have any tape overhang, make sure you just kind of pull it down. Okay. And now I'm going to line it up. And I lined up to my pencil marks. So I'm just going to push the center one down and then just work my way out. This side. And then this side. And I'm going to lift up my cover a little bit. Because when I push down here between the page, and I mean the front cover and the spine, I just want to make sure it is creased a little bit. And then do the same thing to the other side. And now all I'm going to do is just make sure I burnish everything down good. And before I add my pages, I'm going to erase my pencil marks. You shouldn't see them when everything's all said and done, but I just prefer to erase them just in case. And then all you want to do is just keep working those pages. like that. And it still folds nice. So I'm definitely a fan of this new way of covering albums so far. It even made that nicer. All right, so we can actually just get right on to adding pages because I feel like we're good. I really like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the pages. So we're going to start with, I don't really have a preference. However, I do need to tape my backs because this one will go on here. And then when it opens, you know, let's get rid of all the chunkiness because there's too much bulk to kind of play with. So I'm going to go ahead and empty out my pockets so my album page will lay a little flatter. 
and it'll just make it easier lining it up. So now it's a little lighter. So basically what I'm going to do is stick this down. Just like that. And I'm using the half inch tick marks that I made as my guide to lay my page down. So, and probably opening it up would be best. And make sure you test. You want to make sure you're even space in here and here. And make sure, like, if you have to make any adjustments, use your tick marks as a guide so you'll know if you're not quite even whether or not you have to come closer on one end to the dot or further away. So if you put it where it needs to go. Oops. That would help too, just in case you, oops, in case you were off balance. But I think it might be good. So I'm going to go for it. So let me know. Figure out here. So I'm going to take this one off first. And let's see. One there. I'll do the bottom and go up. And that looks really even to me. Yay! All right, so now we'll move on to the next one. You're definitely going to want to take out your pocket stuff if, you, if you've made the pages and put them in like this. It'll just make it easier. So now, now this one here, you can go ahead and line it up to those marks and then make sure this page here lines up to this page. And it'll be easy enough to see because if you put it on and press it down, if you set it down, it should line up perfect. So... Okay. And I'm going to start, oops, start with the bottom. That looks even there. And now this page. This one. Okay. And same thing again. Test it out first, and it lays down nice. And that looks good too. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I need to add tape to the whole back side here. And then we can go ahead and attach these pages on top. So let me get my tape on there and we'll stick those ones down. Okay, so I went ahead and added all of my tape to my pages, just like that. Now we can go ahead and add our next page. So for this one here, 
you're not going to really use the guide so much as you're going to use your previous page. So it should, as long as you cut everything right, should line up. So give it a trial run and check it over. So I want to make sure everything is lined up, top, bottom, sides, nothing's crooked. Use your fingers to feel. When you think you are good, I'm going to stick it down and I'll show you how I like to do that. And take your time with it. And when you think you are good, be careful too if you're using score tape. It does have a tendency to make your page slip. However, I think you're good. <laughs> Let's see. I feel like I'm going to get there. So what I'm going to do is just lift the, this up a little bit. And remove my tape and then just like feels like it's still okay. Stick it down and just make sure you're all lined up. That looks pretty good to me. So now what I want to do is stick the rest down. So I'm just gonna remove my tape. That looks pretty good to me. So this is why you needed a three-quarter inch gusset between your pages because these are very chunky and thick pages. So when you flip them, you kind of have a lot going on. So let's go on to the next one. Might get a little trickier because as you start folding these down, you don't want them to bend too, too much. Whoops. Slip right down. He's giving me a little problem here. But I think I'm going to just semi-stick that.
and then it won't move. And actually, that was good. So let me make sure. And it looks good, so now I can stick down the rest. And I just realized I told you to erase the pencil marks on the binding, and I forgot to do that. No biggie. Here's that one, and the last one. Same thing again. Hopefully this one works better. I think I'm going to do the same thing I just did before. Just fold down a little piece of it and then let me line it back up again. all together now so it goes this way and then flip it all the way over and this way and then if we close it up it's just have to be careful because I don't have anything holding my flaps down yet so I don't want them to get stuck but I don't know how well you can see that but they're nice chunky pages as well as we have enough room for spine, so we won't have alligator mouth. Really cute. So I'm going to go ahead and add all my little pieces back in. So here's with most of my photo mats and tags in. And as you can see, we still have lots of room for space. So we've got plenty of room in here to go ahead and add lots of photos and stuff. And this is a very heavy album, so lots of hidden pockets everywhere. Alrighty, so now what we're going to do is work on the inside um, front and back covers. And we'll figure out what we're going to do on those ones. So we're going to get started on our inside, front, and back covers. And what I created was this page right here. So it has a little flap. We're using the accordion pocket, so we have lots of room. Two smaller pockets and also medium pockets. So let me just show you the dies that I used for this. So from Journals and Planners, I use the small pocket die, number 653. 
I also use from journals and planners the medium pocket die, 652. I got to play with this new, fun new one, the harmonica pocket. And then big labels and tags number 13, which we've been using for our um, pockets and stuff. All right, so what you need to do is I cut a piece 8 and 3 quarters by 8 and 3 quarters. And I have two of the small pocket dies, one of the medium. I cut out all the pattern pieces to go with those as well as the tag. So on this tag here, you're going to go ahead, put it in your scoreboard, and then put it in. And then you're going to measure over 6 and 1 8 and make a score line. All right. And let's see, my accordion pocket, you need one of those and one um, and the pattern piece to go with that. So let's get started on that. So this is really easy to make. It takes more time to cut the pieces out than to assemble it. So what I'm going to do is take my two small ones and I'm going to go ahead and just set it on the far edge. And I'm going probably about an eighth or sixteenth of an inch actually away from the side and put that one on and then I'm going to put this one on the opposite side uh, keeping all the same spacing so whatever I have at the bottom I want to make sure I have on um, this one those are even and now I'm going to take my harmonica pocket. So I have already folded on all of my lines and scored them down. So now when they fold in, they're going to fold in nice and tight. But for this one, I'm only going to attach the bottom piece right now. And what I'm going to do is hold those two down. I know you can't see because this is all black on black. But you know what, let me get a piece of paper. Maybe it'll help. So this is just so you can see what I'm doing. So these pieces are here. And I'm going to focus on the bottom. And I want to make sure that I am going to line up right across the bottom between this one and this one. And I'm going to stick it down. Okay, probably not on the white paper. Hold on. Line it up again. It was going to stick to my white paper. All right, let's try it again. So I'm lining it up the center between the two. So let me put the paper down so you can see it better. So basically this is what we have right now. So you have a very small amount of piece that you're going to see here and same thing over here. So now what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and add my pattern paper. So you want to make sure that this is going to fit. And if you need to trim it, trim it down. I cut this a quarter inch smaller. Make sure that folds, make sure it's staying flat, and that one, so that all looks good to me. So, and I look even everywhere, so I'm going to, I've already got square tape on the back side of this. So stick down one side. And then put the rest down. And then everything should fold over nice, and it does. You don't want no resistance. If you do, go ahead and trim it up a little bit more. And we're going to stick all our pockets down. And then our accordion pocket, 
I like to go ahead and remove the tape from one side and then make sure it's all you've got it all squished up and then make sure it's straight so you know it's straight because you're not going to see any of the accordion so now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side And we have that right there. Now we can go ahead and we need to add some of our pattern pieces first. Actually, you know what? I, and I did this one first because I wanted to make sure that this was underneath the pattern paper so it didn't catch on anything. So this one here, this is my pocket like this. So the bottom piece here, I want to go all the way to the bottom of this pocket. So center it side to side and all the way to the bottom. Now I can put this down. So what I want to do is make sure that this, when this goes on, it's not catching on the bottom part of this pocket here. Because you, as you know, sometimes your tags get stuck when we have little tuck spots hidden underneath for pockets. So I'm trying to eliminate that by putting this on now. But if you don't, it's no big deal. And with the accordion pocket, you get two pieces to cut out two different size squares. And I just went with the largest one because I'm covering it over. So now we can stick down this pocket. And now we can add the rest of our pattern papers. So you'll have two little skinny pockets on the sides to put little smaller tags. And then you'll have two of these here stacked. So let me show you. So what this pocket here will do is when we put this on, um, you, just like on some of my other pockets in the album, we put photo mats to keep the flap closed. That's exactly what we're going to do here. So on this one now, so when you put this one on, it comes almost down to this pocket because what you want to do is have it kind of conceal anything that's inside here, but you want it still long enough where if you create any bulk, it's not going to get past that spot. So make sure you center it to your space. So I got it where I want it. So I'm going to stick this one down. Stick that. And I can go ahead and put this on my bottom pocket. So that's going to go just like that. This side is just as pretty. I hate to put glue on it when it's so pretty. And then now here, I've already cut these down to size, what I need. So this one's going to go right here. If you're gluing, make sure you press it out really good because you don't want any glue bumps underneath. And then this one's going to go right on top like that. All right, so that one's down. Now the only thing I have to do is I need to go ahead and add some tape to the back of that. 
and I actually made a new one. And then we can stick these in our book. And then the only thing that's going to be left is covering our front cover and the back cover. Now, let me just show you one thing in the book that I came across. All right, so we have our two pages there. So one thing I did notice with the book is on this page here, the ones that have the little brad, because my brad is sticking up because it's more three-dimensional, it kept catching on over here on my photo mats. So all I did was just take my tag and put one sideways, and then now it's not going to catch. So if you're having a problem like that with it catching, just do something like that, and you'll be good. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is going to fit right on, just like that. So make sure I'm good, and I'm going to stick it down. And get the rest out. Look at how pretty that is. And then to the back one. I'm going to stick this guy right here. Looks good. My tape ripped. This one. And there we go. To eliminate that, you would just, so that's how you keep the, that closed right there. But I think it's going to catch on my tag, so I'll definitely have to get something in there. All right, so super cute on that one. I love how this book's coming out. All right, we will move on to the covers. And see, now we're still, we're starting to get a little wide, but it's still perfectly plenty of room for photos. So doing a three inch spine is definitely a must. All right, so now we're gonna cover. All right, so I went ahead and cut out my pages for my cover. So I cut these at eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters. And I cut my spine piece eight and three quarters by two and three quarters. So we're already taped up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this on. So it looks good right there. Let's go this way. Let's do it like this. 
get it started first. So make sure I'm squared off. Looks good. Now also the way I um, cover these papers here, you could actually put your pattern paper on first if you wanted to. However, the only thing you run into is um, getting your cover smudged from moving it back and forth while you're designing it. So I would say if it's a darker paper, you might be okay. However, if it is lighter in color, I would wait to the end, but it is an option. So and then let's do this side. Also be sure if you are using paper that is directional, make sure you're putting it on correctly. This is non-directional paper, so I'm good. This one stick down. And we're almost done. So for the cover, I actually have some chipboard embellishments that I kind of want to use on this. So I don't think I'm going to do anything too fancy with that art. started. Line it up. Oops, keep slipping. And then now I can just pull the rest off. We are all done making this. All right. So let me figure out the cover. Like I said, I think I'm going to use those chipboard embellishments because I have some that match the paper. So I might as well use them, seeing how I just used up all of this paper collection. So we'll see what I do. All right, so I think I am done with this album. So from some of my embellishments I had for this pack, I had some chipboard pieces. So I just put this on the cover, and I'll be able to put some photos in later. So I did leave room to go ahead and tuck them in, but I wanted to go ahead and give the cover some kind of a treatment. So I really enjoy how this came out and it's a nice fall album with all the pretty fall colors although we seem to have gone straight to winter so but anyway let me just walk you through real quick so I had that in the cover and then we come over here and I added some photo mats and then right in here so this pocket here will actually be able to hold four by six photos this one here happens to be uh, six and a half by four and a half the photo mat so I have plenty of room there and then my two little side pockets at some point I probably will go back and make some tags some smaller tags for this just to go ahead and fill it up um, I don't know why you're giving me a hard time now so a cute little unique look right there and then of course you have room you can put a photo up here you could always put photos in the background as well close this down and then these photo mats keep that flap shut and then we come over here and again same thing we have our pockets that we made along with lots of room for our photo mats here and then we have even more in the back and then we have this one so as you can tell we made a lot of pockets and then we open up here to lots of room for photos as well 
and then we come over to this side. Now I did have to turn my tag sideways because my brad right here kept catching on this pocket over here. So I, I went ahead and just angled that tag like that so it wouldn't catch. I am thinking of maybe coming in and attaching some clear acetate sheets on a small little binding piece here. So that way it kind of protects the pieces from um, rubbing on each other. But we'll see. But over here you have a double corner stack pocket. So that's where our little tags go in here. And then this flips open. And then we have our cute little waterfall. And it all closes up. Yeah, see some of my papers are rubbing, so I'm probably going to do something with an acetate cover on that. Even if I just made a piece, cut piece of square acetate the size of my pages and put some pattern paper around the outside of it and just laid it in between the pages just to protect them a little bit. So, and then we open up this way. Lots of room for photos over here as well as more room for loose photos and stuff. So not too many hidden pockets, but a little bit. And then if you open up this page, you can get yourself a nice photo spread on all of that. And then, of course, as you know, all of our pages repeat themselves. And we just go on through, just like that, and then the back page. All right, so I hope and you can see how... Let's see if I can get it in the light, sort of. You can see how nice and thick this is. And we still have some room, so it's not an alligator mouth yet, even without our photo. So there's plenty of room still to add photos. So not too bad. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, Patty's Crappy Spot, or pre YouTube channel, if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, guys, happy crafting. Bye. Thank you.